Uh, I'm super passionate about selling 100 houses a year. That was my goal number one when I got into the business. There was, was this one agent who was selling over 100 houses and I wanted. One guy once told me, you're not gonna sell 100 houses. That gave me even more fire. I was able to sell a little more than that. I'll, I'll share a little bit about me for those who maybe don't know me, who I am and things like that. Why would you listen to me? But I'm going to talk to you as if you want 100 houses a year. If you want to sell 100, you will have to do everything I will say here because you will have to become an ultimate salesperson. <coughs> you will have to know how to talk to strangers, how to do the content, how to follow up and everything like that. I don't want to jump on too fast. Going to events is not going to help you sell 100 houses. It's the action you're going to be taking. If you go into event after event after event, you have to stop. You have to then think, am I taking action? If you're not, then you have to revisit why, what's holding you back. Because events, you're never going to hear anything magic. My goal here is to give you as much value. You, after this event, feel like, okay, this was good. He brought me value. I feel great. I didn't have to pay for it. The things are relevant. It's not that it's from 90s or 80s. This is the stuff that worked. It's working now. And I uh, hope it's going to you know, give you some motivation. Uh, maybe you're already on the road, but that's going to just a little bit maybe help you. Oh, I'm on the right track. It's not easy. It's going to take a lot of time. Um, the, the comfort zone, we all know that it will require you to step outside the comfort zone. It will require you. This is what I'm doing right now. It's not comfortable. I'm not, I'm not the fan of it. I've never liked it in school. I never like it still. This is pushing. It's thinking a lot about it. Um, like every time I sponsor events, they give me the microphone to say things. I don't like it. I don't want to do it, but I know that I will have to do it in order to make money. It's all about I'm in this business to make money. If anybody tells you I'm in the real estate because I allow whatever I love, I don't know. I'm here to make money. You have to do what's required. So if you feel like, oh, he's naturally doing uh, content and everything like that, I'm pushing myself tremendously. Carlos can, can you know, Confirm, we argue a lot, but you know, we have to do it. It has to be done. Going to 100 sales a year is huge sacrifice for your family and your personal life. That's 100%. Uh, there's gonna be a lot of evenings, a lot of weekends that you're gonna spend with clients. But every time you waste time with clients, you make more money. You're probably gonna give up somewhere in the middle of the road. That's 99% of you is gonna be like, shit, I'm okay with 50. Uh, that's okay. Um, I don't need to get to 100. Why would I need 100? Maybe it's not a goal, but Knowing the road, I'm gonna just lay it down for you, I'm gonna show you. There's things that we'll have to put in place after you reach a certain level. At a certain level, you'll plateau. You'll need to implement a couple other things in order to break through, and then you'll plateau again. After 132 deals that I did, I plateau again. We had to start growing. That's how we were able to keep growing. For those who don't know who I am, uh, I was in the trucking business, had a couple of semi trucks, boom, boom, boom. I was making money, didn't like it. I uh, wanted to switch something. And um, I feel like career in real estate might be the good thing because I feel like I want to meet new people, but I was terrible at it. Like my skills, communication skills, people, sales skills were horrible. I didn't know how to read people. I didn't know what this whole business is about. I was super shy. One time, one girl asked me when I joined the company, she asked me, can you please open the door? I have, a, I have uh, my buyers, uh, they want to do inspection and I can't make it, can you please open the door? So I opened the door and I was sitting in the car waiting for them to finish it and so I stepped out of the car, locked the door and left. So I was even uncomfortable being around them. It's just horrible, you know? It was very bad, but somewhere deep inside I felt like I want to be meeting new people. So it took me eight months to sell my first house. Uh, it was my condo that I sold to myself. Uh, then my friend <laughs> bought one. <laughs> then my friend bought one. Then I did one for sale by owner deal off market. I found a deal. I found a developer, put them together and made thousand bucks. Was happy <laughs> <laughs> because I was able to put something that's off market. It took me eight months. It was hard. I had 80,000, 60,000 of savings, burned that, went into debt for 20K. But I went full time. I just decided to go full time because if I do something else and then there's something else that's not really working, I will just stop working in real estate. I'll just do something else. So I figured I know myself, I'll have to burn all the bridges and go all in. That's what I did, burn a lot of money. 
Uh, my dad shipped me some money from Ukraine, so I survived. And I was listening every single day to the podcasts. Every single day, it was the just just obsessing over the, the industry. <clears throat> One guy told me like how much money you were making in truck. I said, oh, around four thousand a week or something like that. And he's like, you quit this for this? You were gonna do real stuff? I'm like, what am I doing? Maybe I'm doing something wrong. Maybe I shouldn't be doing this. And then the other guy says, you're never gonna sell hundred houses. I'm like, whoa, that's that's motivational. You know, things are lining up good. So. But then I looked at the guy, he's selling 100 houses. I'm like, he's doing it. And the average commission is roughly six grand if you're in the 300,000 sales range. So why not just, if I sell 100 houses, I'll make 600,000. It's doable, it's, it's possible, so maybe I can do it. So yeah, I was listening to a podcast. This podcast is amazing. Real estate rock stars, if you have whatever you have, uh, so, uh, find it, listen to it every single day. I was interviewed there twice as well. Um, Amazing, that change, just change opened up my mind to all sorts of lead generations. Everybody does it differently. Just you pick your, your way. We're gonna talk about how to go. I'm gonna break this down zero to 100 in three sections. Zero to 20, I strongly believe that's the, th those are the ceilings. Zero to 20, 20 to 50, 50 to 100. You will see agents that are stopped at 50. They will stop and they will never go break through. There will be 55, 45, 60, 40. They will just stuck at that range, they will be stuck. So I was able to go to zero to 132 in four years. COVID helped me a lot as well. It, was, it would took me more years, but I was on a trajectory already before COVID, 60 plus homes. And I already had systems built out to be able to get to 100, but COVID just, you know, boosted a little bit. Cause you know, we know what happened in 2021 and that, that's when we got 132. Last year we did 222 and this year we're gonna do 300, but that's already a bigger team, much bigger. So. Everything I'm going to be talking about is mastering these four pieces. This is this is not a secret, but you have to master. This is you you the, in the beginning of your career. It will always be the the, the focus you have is the lead gen. It's a different ways: so calls, open houses, uh, content, uh, events, uh, whatever you're going to be doing, networking. You have to master this uh, this first stage. From zero to twenty, you only need one. Really, you only need one lead source. You don't need to know many. When you're stepping from zero to 20, only master one. You have to start trying which one is, is, is the one that works for you. Because we have, at our company, we have agents that do this thing it brings, but the, the other agent cannot do this. For example, it's a content. Everybody has little different problems or like, uh, like some agents say, I have to do it, I'll do it. But then some say, I'm, I don't feel like natural, so I'll do something else. There's it's different for everybody, different agents do it differently, but that's one thing you will never change a focus is a lead gen. And then it's a nurture. You have to learn how to follow up, follow back, follow through with your clients. You have to learn how to, which ones, uh, you know, how to stay in touch with them properly, how to, how to lead to the closing. That's another step. You will be learning that as you learn the lead generation, you will have to learn it. And you will burn sometimes yourself because you'll see that, oh my God, I lost contact with this one. Now they're somewhere else, you know, they're there with another agent. What was the problem? And then you start, you, you, will, you will have to go through it. It will have to be a little bit painful, but those are your first two, uh, two focuses. Then you learn how to close and then how to stay in touch because you want the lead generation again to become easier and easier and easier. You don't want to be sitting on a phone 40 years and calling prospects and looking for, for, you know, for clients. You want it to be every year easier and easier and easier and so they come to you and you're not chasing them. That's when the stay in touch and follow back is going to, to help you. But all these stages is a mastering. You have to master and it will take some time. In the beginning, uh, everything starts with commitment and confidence. The commitments first, you have to commit to this business. You are 100% real estate agent. I am in this business to make money and I'm a professional. And then after that, after you're committing to this business, everything will start changing for you. you will, your actions will start changing. You'll start seeing people looking at you differently because you start reading stuff, because you start uh, researching more, because you start you know, uh, uh, talking to different, people about uh, this topic because now you start, every time you meet somebody, your your mind goes into real estate, not something else that you're doing or maybe you're not believing that you're real estate. So it's like everything starts with a commitment and confidence. Confidence also will come from you learning because the best salesperson is the one 
who knows the process and the product the most. So if you don't know how to run, for example, if it's talking about investment properties, you don't know what the cap rate, what's NOI, how to run the deal, you don't know what the FHA 203K, you don't know what the different loan products are, you're not committed. And that's why you will not have a confidence. And that's why you will not <coughs> speak to prospect the way you should be speaking to attract. I was growing, I'm like wondering why they're all coming to me. Like what's the what's the deal? Like because they felt that that you know the confidence, that that commitment. Every time you ask me something, I'll pour so much knowledge into you. You're like, oh my God. Uh, and the next time I buy something or sell something, I have to go to this person because that's like open up so many doors. Even if you're the best, you still have to advertise. Have you ever met the agent who sells, who's the best, knows everything, but they only sell 10 houses a year. And there's this guy who is like, you know, somewhat, no, no, but he's selling more. And his approach is not as good. I don't like his, his attitude, but he's selling more. So that perfect agent who's the best service, the best intentions, is not selling enough. Why? That's, that's always been my question in the beginning. I don't want to be that agent. I don't want to have peak and valleys. I don't want to not know what my income is going to be. Uh, that was big, my, my big problem. The, the solution is this. You have to become the best. The service has to be top notch, but you also have to advertise your service and yourself. And that's uncomfortable, but you have to do it in order to get to uh, 200 sales a year. And remember that the easiest client is the one that's coming back. We all know that. But the whole the whole system of you working on your business will have to be so you have a lot of returning clients. How do you do that is the is what will keep your mind running nonstop. It's like I have 200 people in my database. They know me, but if you put yourself in their shoes, they not think they don't think about you every day. So you have to kind of develop a system of reminding them all the time. Uh, another thing you probably are confused. You're probably thinking 2023 is a bad market. There's still deals not happening. This and that. We yesterday had a training here and we watched Mike Ferry show. He said that right now deals are made by people who need to move, and there's deals to be made in every single community, and that's true. People, there's always going to be deals made. Look at the MLS, every day you'll see deals happening, whatever the market's doing, whatever the interest rates are doing. It's just those who are committed will do more, and those who are somewhat heard that this industry is good, I want to do it, but kind of I saw some Instagram posts, these people posting a bunch of stuff, they're selling left and right, so maybe I'll just step in and sales will happen to me. We'll leave, we'll make more room for you but you'll just have to stay at it and you, you will have to shift your marketing. Right now is a hunting season. We go after the deals. We don't attract, we, we still attract, but there's gonna be less coming like it was in 21, 22. You'll have to start hunting deals. Those who are with our company, they keep hearing that all the time. I even remind that to myself, you know? Like the deal I'm gonna be showing today at two o'clock, my listing in Chicago Ridge, four unit building. I called the guy, he bought with me. I told him, you know, maybe you wanna sell, you know, market's good. He said, maybe, I don't know. Then we spoke, 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 and then he said, okay, I'll do it, I'll sell it. Boom, we got a showing and we got a contract before we're showing. So they're, they're kind of like, we, we're 100% sure we're gonna buy it, here's a contract, we're gonna come tomorrow. I pulled that listing, like it was in my database and I have to reach out to the guy, give me the listing, I think you wanna sell it. He's like, okay, let's go, put it for sale. He, he was not calling me, I have to call him. So it's like, right now, that's the season. For you who have a database, you have to go after that database right now, touch base with them. If you don't have any database, you'll have to start um, thinking who is potentially, maybe some of your friends or people that you know might be open to, to do some deals with you. You'll have to go one-to-one, one one, not like, if the content is also important, reaching out and uh, talking about uh, doing a deal is, is it's right now the, the season to do. The whole thing about this, this industry is you not having enough deals because you're not good enough. Uh, because you don't have skills, you don't, do you don't have communication skills, you don't know how to read people, you don't know nothing, uh, not enough about real estate process, um, you don't have enough connections in the business, um, you're not confident enough to do content, not confident enough to reach out to people that don't know you, and that's the problem, you don't have enough deals right now. That everything comes to you because who you are is what you attract. If you don't attract enough, it means that you are not ready yet. You haven't paid the price. You should be helping others for free and outworking everybody else, especially if you're in the beginning. Don't blame the industry, don't blame anybody else because if you don't have enough, that's only because of your problem. If people that know you 
uh, doing the deals with somebody else, that means two things. Either they don't trust you or they don't know that you're a real estate agent or they just forgot because you haven't reminded them yet. Your goal is to let everybody know who knows you, that you're in real estate and always keep reminding them about it. But everything comes first. Uh, rejection is first. It's first, you will have to be rejected. If you don't like rejection, you're in the wrong business. If you're going to go from zero to 20 and stop there, it's fine. You can do deals with the family, friends, and you don't have to get too much rejected. We'll just slowly get there in a couple years. Uh, but if you want to go to zero to 100, make a lot of money and have feel good, you will have to go through these steps as fast as possible. You have to go through rejection. That's a stepping stone into deals. And if you're doing your first couple of deals, chances are high chances they're going to start falling apart you're going to think this business is horrible um, but that's what's going to have to happen they have to start falling apart because that's i don't know that's how universe works that it's nothing comes comes easy you know right away sometimes you're going to do a deal and then you think that the industry oh it's so easy boom and then you get five deals to fall apart it's, that's how it is you have to go through it you have to learn the process and that's good. Deals falling apart is a good process too. Rejection is, is something that it's just part of a game. Sometimes people are very rude. It's just not, it's not to you. It's projection of their personality. And you have to just kind of shift your mind. Like it used to bother me too, but now if you're like every Monday, 12 o'clock, we're making calls uh, it, uh, in our office and some connect through Zoom. So you'll hear us like doing the calls. And if you see me being rejected, and, like I'm just next, next, next. I'm like, oh, that was should have been painful. You're just so used to them, you don't see them. The most painful thing is when your friends are buying with somebody else or selling with somebody else. That will have to happen in the beginning because they don't trust you yet. That usually happens right away. If you're getting into the business, usually they will start doing deals. It happened to me many times. I was usually uh, in the beginning so mad. You know, now I'm looking back, of course, because you know, who, I, I don't know, maybe you're gonna screw up the whole deal. It's like my biggest purchase or my biggest sell. So that's normal. Uh, but just remind, remember that you're going through it, it's normal, but you will have to keep reminding uh, everybody that knows you what you do. That's, you have to do it. That's, that's the first thing you have to do. Don't focus on strangers yet, focus on the ones that know you first. That's the first thing to do. So you don't want somebody to reach out to you, your friend referred you, the uh, friend calls you, hey, I have a house to sell. And then you're like, oh my God, what do I say? You don't know what to say. Okay, do you want me to uh, send you a CMA? And the seller's like, what's that? I don't even know. I'm gonna sell my house, sell my house. Let's book an appointment, you know? Ask me questions, why I wanna sell? And you're sending a CMA. Uh, what's the CMA? You know, you get, you a lot of times you get a, quite like a text for some salespeople with some abbreviations, like, mm, um, I don't even know what that means. Why are you talking to me in your sales language? Talk to me, you know, like I'm a third grader. You have to be ready for the yes, and uh, you have to know what the first question is to ask. If a uh, seller tells you, I want to sell, just remember this one, uh, one sentence. What's causing you to think about selling? Don't go into, yeah, how much? Uh, you know, I'm going to send you a CMA, let's move, boom, boom, boom. Start digging deeper, like think about that's your s uh, sister, um, mother, you know, who's, sell, who's telling you I want to sell. What would you say? Why? W where are you going? Do you know where you're going? You have to learn how to ask questions, but in the beginning, sales questions, but in the beginning you have to kind of build rapport and relate. And even if it's your friend, like right now, two doors down, my, my neighbor wants to sell his house. So I'm going to be coming in. He doesn't know me. Uh, I moved in a year ago. We haven't had a chance to meet each other two doors down. I know everybody next to me and I know everybody this way, but that one doesn't know that I'm a real estate agent. So my goal is to make sure he knows so he lists with me. So tomorrow I'm going to go to him, knock on the door, give him the CMA, uh, talk to him, give him some presentation about the company, um, and then we'll, we'll see. Uh, one of our agents also making lots of calls and she bumped into one of the agents who is a top producer in Park Ridge. And she was asking him if she needs help renting his house because apparently he was renting by owner on Zillow. And he's like, you asking me, I'm a top agent, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm the king of real estate here. But he says, good on you, you're doing good. Uh, and he congratulated her on making calls. So like those who are doing better than you will never judge you. You know, they will, those who are judging and like uh, uh, giving you a bunch of rejection, usually, you know, move on, don't worry about them. This is somebody whose attitude is a projection of themselves and you just keep going. They will never, never, nobody will criticize you if they're doing better than you. So the magic you're looking for is in the work you're avoiding. This, this, the, the one time I heard that quote, it was just amazing. The magic you're looking for is in the work you're avoiding. It's just so true. I remember like in the beginning, I feel like I need to make calls to, uh, to for sale by owners. That was like, it was bugging me. I have to like, if I call 100 for sale by owners, 
I'm going to list somebody. And I was avoiding, avoiding, avoiding. If you ask my wife, I would just hide in the room, make a call, be horrible at it. I would go to the office and I would make a call. If somebody walks by, I would drop the phone so they don't hear my, 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 my script, you know, because it was horrible. Turns out nobody ever, never uh, say anything bad to me, but I had to get better and I was, I was making a bunch of them and I was listing properties. That's what everything is happening out of the comfort zone. You all know what you need to do. Uh, there's no secrets. We all know what we has to be done, and um, you just you just creating like how about if I give give a credit card to a company that generates leads, and they're gonna send me those leads, and the whole thing is just solved, and it's not. There's a bunch of strangers that did something online maybe, and you're gonna start making calls. And they're like, what? Who are you? Why are you calling? Same thing if you just made a bunch of calls to to the ones you just downloaded from Mojo or uh, Red X, you know, all these softwares too. If you don't, then Mojo is the software you pull phone numbers from, and then um, you'll have to have a reason. We'll talk about it a little later, but you don't have to buy leads. That's, that's one thing I wanted to touch on. Of course, you need to know more than the average consumer. That comes again from commitment. If you commit it, you will start reading a lot. You'll start learning a lot, especially right now about this whole thing that's going on in the industry, you know, this lawsuit. You have to know what's happening, you know, to know what the, what the reasons are, how to talk to people, now how to talk to buyers, sellers, you know, that, that comes from commitment too. You have to know more than the average person because if the average person is asking questions, you don't even know how to answer them, especially if it's an investor, somebody who's bought a couple times. And if you're in the beginning stages, you're just starting out in the industry, people are gonna know you in the beginning stages, but if your attitude is like, I don't know, but I'll, I'll, I'll find out for you. And if you're really trying and trying to help, some people will give you the deal just because they like you. I do that all the time. Even if I like the product, but I don't like a salesperson, I will leave and I'll buy with somebody who is better salesperson than, um, than the previous one, even if the product is the same. Adriana knows about it because I bought a car back in the days from her, but somebody else was selling me that car, but she was better, so I bought it with her. Same thing with any product I do. So it's like um, uh, some people will give you the deal even though you haven't done any deals, but they like your attitude, they like your approach, you're trying to help. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. You just have to make sure that they're happy and every single client who's happy, it's your tree that's gonna produce fruits. You're just gonna have to be patient. The more time you waste on clients, the more money you will make. 100% true. I was moving my first listing. I was packing boxes and ordering U-Haul for my first listings because husband was in the military, he was gone and she had three kids. And it was my first for sale by owner listing. Took me a year to sell, 100K overpriced. I dropped the price finally within a year. I sold it and I had to help her move. It was so much work. I'm like, if every listing is gonna be like that, I didn't sign up for this. I'm not the mover, I didn't wanna move. Uh, I thought that the heaviest thing I'm gonna carry is my cell phone and a pen, but now I have to hold boxes from the basement. It was horrible, but I, I had nothing else to do. Like, it's my only deal, I'll have to do it. And I'm sure everybody's gone through this, but if you're thinking like, oh, I'm not gonna go to this plains from Mandalayan or from Oak Lawn because it's 40 mi miles drive and he's only wanted to look and I think he's not serious yet. You know, if you're like selling 60 houses a year already, that's when you can kinda dictate because it comes from confidence, I have a bunch of leads, I can say no. But if you're in the beginning stages, you gotta do what you gotta do. You have to build up your database. That's building up. For success, you have to pay the price up front. This is my exponential growth that I came up with. That's my thing. Uh, I'm very proud of it. <laughs> exponential growth happens when clients know each other. That's like, that's something that if you think deep enough, um, that's what I've seen in my career, that I was getting clients coming to me because four of my clients know the future client, you know? Like they know each other. So I'm in the community and that community knows each other. And so I don't have to do anything. My past clients are doing the networking and lead generation for me at any events or anything, you know, where they go out. So that's, if you're going after for sale by owners, they don't know each other. They are all separate. They don't know each other. They just have, uh, what's in common is they just decided to sell on their own. But if you have successful like 20, 30 sales, they're not gonna talk to each other. That's the thing, that's when your clients talk to each other, beauty, it's gonna exponentially kick you up. And that's, I think, is important to have 100 sales a year. Other than just spending a bunch of money on leads to get a bunch of people, 1,000 people, when you close 100. That's one way to do it, but that's, you know, you'll see a bunch of people, uh, like teams, they're uh, killing it, they're, they're, their numbers are tremendous, but then if you see their budget on spend, it's crazy, everybody's just eating Zillow leads, and hoping they don't double. 
if you can think about some demographics, location, where the community is, uh, location is one of the best, the language you speak is the second one is, is great if you can get into that and then interests uh, if you can get into one of these maybe there's something else that you can you can tap into um, and you think okay my clients will know each other and then adding a bunch of friends on Facebook that have mutual friends that's gonna just even help because now also a lot of things are happening virtually so if you're adding friends that have a bunch of mutual friends that's also like tapping into the community that bunch of friends know each other if you can take away from this this one thing that I would strongly suggest to focus on that that don't chase you know single every single deal that's out there but in the beginning you have to do everything possible to get just get that commission check whatever whatever you can do just get that little money happening because that's that's like oh I have a little success let's keep going because in the beginning you're gonna have like disappointments you're gonna be like ah this industry is tough nothing's working so if you have somebody else that's doing good and you can just watch them oh if he's doing or she's doing I can do it too that's also great but getting into like anything I can do just just do anything possible to get your first deals happen that's what needs to be done at the beginning but then later you'll have to focus on how to get to financial growth the only lead source that has compounding effect is referrals so that's that's the whole thing why this business is all referral based um, you want to prospect your way out of prospecting but you have to build up the database in the beginning also like I went to my managing broker and said is it a good idea to call for sale by owners nobody's in the office doing that he said yes and then I remember one uh, one agent told me like I don't do that I just only work by referrals this is like being evil this is being good person so like the going after this 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 type of leads is doing the wrong way running the business the wrong way and going by refer working by referrals is the right way but I don't have no referrals so how am I going is it possible to do a deal with a stranger and then have them as a database member and give you referrals and in my mind it was like yeah but I had nobody give me that like could you tell me that if I go to a stranger have a good success with him and and uh, and have him uh, uh, appreciate my service or her and give me back the referral is it possible uh, trajectory for for me and I would never get an answer until I went to um, Ryan Sarhan in New York 2019 and he told me it's possible then I'm like open my eyes because if he tells me that then it might have to work because he's the very successful guy so let's talk about the foundation everything um, you'll have to have like again we go back to commitment uh, that's where everything is starting uh, you committed to this industry and so every single social platform you have has to say you're a realtor if you're not on social not on Google you don't have your Google page you're not existing because even if your mother gives you a referral to her best friend she's gonna Google you she's gonna research you and everything will have to have your best information professional logo professional banner your information your cell phone your hard work in 24 7 um, and bunch of content if you if as much as possible you can put out that means you're professional Google page is a must LinkedIn Z oh Zillow yeah Zillow you gotta have a Zillow profile as an agent Zillow has a very high SEO score if somebody Google's you Zillow link will show up one of the top if you don't have any sales hook up to the company and then you will have the results like um, we uh, we hook up the new agents also to our profile so then if somebody Googles their profile is, is active and then it will say a bunch of sales so uh, but it also if you start reading a lot it will say that it's a company sales but that already gives you some credibility especially if you're in the beginning and then as many possible websites if you can to sign up those are free of course and uh, those are your store that's where people go to visit you don't have to have a website yet I'll talk about the website a little later and my beliefs on website um, but make sure those are all done remind them every day about that you're a real estate agent and keep adding keep adding people to your platform so Google pro, uh, page will have to have pictures up uh, every as, as many as possible if you can every day a couple times a day every week uh, Google will kick you up if you uploading pictures regularly to your business page uh, same thing with Facebook Instagram if you can put start putting a bunch of content and if you're starting out with the content don't have to do a videos like me talking to the camera that took me years to to get comfortable with you can start with pictures and today I was in the office today this boom boom, boom this uh, book appointment to show a house and talk about you know that what you did today again your number one job is to make sure that everybody who knows you know what you do and you're good at it and I was asked also a question so how does the client pick which agent is better how do they know happens subconsciously they pick and they don't know why how why they picked because you programmed because you've been posting 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 that shows you are professional you are active you know what you're doing you're doing every day boom I'll go to him or her 
you know? I ask myself, like, I have a couple contractors that do this, but I went with that one. Like, I don't know why somehow he went top of mind. And maybe just because he called me or because I saw him somewhere just recently, but those other ones did a bad job of advertising. In the beginning, you also have to learn how to read listings. One thing that'll help you save some time, a lot of times you'll be able to save, I, I drove so much in the beginning, wasting time, where there's a railroad in the back and, and, and lots of stuff that I could just look a little bit deeper into the picture and scroll and zoom in and just see that it's a waste of time. But direct sales versus content. Both are super important. Direct sales means running ads and collecting leads, making calls, meeting people, talking face to face, networking. Those I call like direct sales. That's when you go after, let's do some business. And then creating content and uh, marketing would be just, you know, attracting, putting a bunch of material and uh, get providing value and not asking anything in return. Direct sales and making calls are super important because that will teach you how to ask questions, will help you in every single step, not just by how to list, how to show, how to sign a buyer agreement. It will also help you down the line. I want to get into new development. Oh, there's a sign they're building. Boom, let me pick up the phone and ask questions. If you haven't done it ever, you're not gonna be able to do it. You're never gonna be able to pick up the phone. And you know, if you line up a couple developers, you're gonna be well positioned to hit 100 sales, you know? But you're not gonna be able to do it in the beginning, for sure. You don't know what to ask, you don't know what they're looking for. You have to learn how to start asking questions that are leading the prospect into the decision-making process. When they say, I'm not interested, I'm not looking. One question that recently I discovered, and I, I was, I recently, a couple of years ago, that I discovered uh, was, would you like me to keep you posted on what's happening in the area? And sometimes they, yeah. So that opens up the whole thing for me, like they're interested, they just not know. And uh, sometimes they say no, that means, okay, disqualified. I don't, I don't, you know, they're not interested, so I'm not gonna be wasting time with them. But just, you know, learning another question. Last Monday we were calling rent by owners and one of the agents were asking questions and do you need help with rentals? I'll list it for you, boom, boom, boom. And then he says, no, drop the phone. I'm like, you can ask now how many properties does he own? You can ask how maybe he's thought about selling. So those are extra questions that sometimes you just have to stay open-minded. But that's why direct sales will teach you that. And those are one-to-one -one conversations. Those are not one-to-many. When you're creating content, dropping it on uh, social media, people see it, but it's like, you're not talking to me. You're talking to really everybody. So I'm like kind of watching, I'm getting my value. Okay, thanks. But when you're talking one-to-one, -one, that is, so even if you're like creating content and then following up with people, for example, somebody commented on it, and you're just going one-to-one -one in conversations that create a deeper relationship. And right now, I think it's even more important right now, the one-to-ones, than attracting because the rates are low, everybody wants to buy and sell. Uh, and content solves two things at once, it's a reach and remind. It reaches new people, remind the people that already know you about the fact that you're a real estate agent. That's, that's what you have to be done every single day. Calls is hard because you're gonna be exhausted in two hours, you're gonna be tired doing a bunch of calls, but it's gonna create your skills. You're gonna have the skills. So you have to do both, you know? It's pretty much, you have to do a bunch of calls, you have to do a bunch of content, you know? Sorry. When you're going from zero to 20, I think you can do either way, sales or marketing. It doesn't matter, you can do a bunch of content. Uh, we have agents who do a bunch of content and getting leads coming to them. Or you can start making calls to, to prospects. But I think sales are more important because you're gonna have the foundation. In order to get to 100 deals a year, you're gonna have to know the sales game. You have to know how to ask questions. That's, you're building the foundation. Everything I spoke about this is pretty, pretty much like finding a land for the foundation. The sales is like a foundation. You have to learn how to ask questions because you're the salesperson. Um, the marketing is, is gonna get you some easy sales too. But if you're relying only on marketing, only like, I'll, I'll buy a billboard, I'll buy a newspaper ad, I'll do one video and I'll just blast it for, for a year and that, that's gonna do the work. It will do the work, it will bring some leads, but you're not professional. It's like an ultimate fighter. They know how to box, they know how to kick, they know how to grapple, they know how to wrestle. That's what you need to have to learn. How to follow up, how to make calls, how to open people up, how to do content, how to speak on stage. It's if you're gonna get there, you're gonna get there. And then you will have to know how to read people, how your leadership skills, you know, how to hire, fire, things like that. But that's when if you're gonna go even further. From 20 to 50, uh, and we're gonna break those down from this point even more. 20 to 50, you have to know both. You'll have to learn the marketing, you have to know the sales. Again, if we're going back to 1980s, no social media, 1990s, no social media, the only way they did was 
I don't know, newspapers and a bunch of phone calls. They used to have these nights where they, anybody been in the business in 1980 um, or 90s doing uh, calls every day, you know, at the office? Um, like we're now implementing that because now we think that we have to hunt for the business. So now every Monday, 12 o'clock, we're on Zoom making a bunch of calls. I'm making it. Those who want to get in, learning and seeing how to do it. Go into commercial industry. Anybody doing commercial here? Anybody professional commercial real estate agent? They don't, they, there's no other way. There's no open houses, no live events, no uh, sphere, no friends, um, no content. They don't do any business like that. They don't do any giveaways, no sponsorships. Shit, only thing they do, they make calls. That's the only thing they do. They just find the business, the property owners and then just buy them from CoStar or Loopna, whatever they use for database. Most of them use CoStar and just call them nonstop. And that's how you build up. You either want to sell, you don't want to sell, maybe you want to buy because you're in commercial. So that's how we doing that too. Uh, and that's what you have to be open. Like if you don't want to sell, maybe you want to buy. Maybe you don't want to sell or buy, maybe you want to re-rent if you're renting, you know? Oh. When the thing is going, when uh, when you need, when you're gonna need some uh, 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 assistance, do you have an agent you're gonna use? No, I don't. Let's stay in touch. What's your email? That's where you're gonna build up your database too. So, um, sales and marketing from 20 to 50, and then I switched it from 50 to 100. It's more important now to do more marketing and then less sales, because now you're gonna have a bunch of systems developed, and those systems will help you or. Uh, uh, collect more more leads will come your way more 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 people will reach out more referrals you will get and you will have to spend more money on marketing and then your sales already skills are high and you will do less just picking up the phone and making a bunch of calls because you kind of prospected your way out of prospecting prospecting your way out of prospecting is the thing so if you feel like oh my god I don't want to do this I didn't sign up in this industry to make a bunch of calls you will have to learn the skills because you're a professional salesperson. You'll have to learn, it's not just cold calling and bothering people. It's, so you can use the scripts that are, that have a magnet and a hook. Like for example, I sold a property, I'm reaching out because I sold a neighbor. That's like bringing value. I was the guy or girl who sold a neighbor. You wanna talk to me? A lot of times you'll feel like they wanna talk to you. For those of us who are, who are making calls, in our office, we see this as an, an eye opening. I'm like, oh my God. Um, we'll talk about it. Uh, okay, so now the beginner, zero to 20 deals. Um, you got to do anything you, you, you can. Uh, do also sorts of lead sources. Try everything. Throw as much mud against the wall as you can. See what sticks. Do more of that. Uh, it's going to take some time. Nothing works. Takes six months to, to, to work, roughly. Whatever you're gonna do, even your family is not gonna buy with you. Nobody's gonna do any business for probably six months, roughly. If you lend the deal, amazing. You're you're great. You might have a little period of time when you're not gonna do another deal. Then you do again, but um, most of the time it's gonna take you some time because everything takes six months. If you're doing farming, that's even taking like 18 months. But whatever you're gonna tr try to do, expired for sale by owners, your skills suck. You don't know what to do. You don't know what to ask. You you're not good. And that's okay that you have to go through it. Um, uh, whatever you're going to be doing. It's just you have to keep trying. Uh, my strong suggestion, this is the only sentence that I put in bold is don't buy leads. That's the only one that I put uh, as a big, big, big letters. Because uh, I believe that's a waste of money. That's, uh, that's, that's a companies that are just capitalizing on opportunity, on your weakness. That you are not ready to just reach out to people that you can get them for free. Mojo charges 10 bucks for the software uh, and 40 bucks for, for, to be able to pull 25,000 uh, phone numbers a month. So you're not gonna be able to call, you're not gonna be able to call 25,000 people. They give you so much opportunity. The, the lead cent costs one cent. 40 bucks per month you pay for, for pulling as many numbers as you want and just talking to them. And the reason you wanna, how you wanna talk to them is find something that's sold or bought Preferably with multiple offers, then you can say there's a bunch of buyers still looking. Do you want to sell? That's like the, the magic uh, script that, that kind of opens up people, especially if you did something. Even if you represented the buyer, you can you can still call and say I sold it, representing the buyer. There's still multiple offers. There's still multiple buyers looking because there was multiple offers. You were competing, so that means there's more buyers, and people talk. You'll be surprised. You just have to then forget about them listing. You're gonna talk to them, build a report, and then see 
because they're going to listen to you and see if you're what your tone is, what your tonality, you know, how they like you or not, and uh, then they're going to decide whether to give you more information or not, you know, things like that. So don't buy any leads. Uh, and then you will have to have your daily routine. Huge thing is a routine. If you don't have the routine, it's all over the place every single day. There's no structure. You're not going to be able to go too far. You're going to be able to sell things, but it's not going to go too far. If you go to a job, you're, you're paying W2, 1099, whatever, you pay it every Friday. You have to be there from 9 to 5, 9 to 4, whatever the schedule is, and your boss will fire you if you don't do it. You are your own boss, and you don't fire yourself from not being on a, on a, on a schedule. The daily routine, I'll share mine. 9 to 12, it's a bunch of prospecting. It's calling, following up, talking to new people, uh, reaching out to strangers, to the ones that know you, following up with the ones that did a deal, will do a deal. It's the phone call time. It's a sales game. Then it's a content time. Sometimes I'll mix in and, and change it, but 9 a.m. in the office every single day. From day one, 2000, March, whatever, 2017, until today, 9 a.m. at the office, unless something is happening, and preferably Saturdays too. Um, that's a daily structure and, 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 and schedule and routine is a compounding effect. It's, it's going to create some results, like uh, we have an agent here, a new agent, two months in the business, he's in the office Monday to Saturday, sometimes even Sunday, making a bunch of calls and having good successes. Uh, but it's just as a, as, a, as a schedule. It's coming to work. I'm at work, you know. That's, that's important. You have to develop that. Whatever it is for you, maybe it's something else in the morning. But the more energy you have, is the, it's going to require a lot of energy for the hardest tasks. So whatever you fear to do, it, may, it could be a content to do every, uh, in the morning. But I strongly believe it has to be sales first and then the marketing content a little later in the afternoon. And then you can work on your business card in the evening. Don't put that thing in the, in the morning, sitting and developing some posts with your picture and writing something that you could have downloaded and posted on it. So you spend four hours developing that in the morning, then your whole day is gone. It's a whole wasted day. Uh, developing the business card and websites, everything is in the evening. We, we do in the Mondays at 12 for a reason too. It's because Monday at 9, it's going to be a little bit tougher, so we moved it a little bit. But that's what we picked, and we're going to stay to it, stick to it. I did it that way because I saw that 9 a.m. on Monday is going to be a little tough for everybody to get together. We have everything going on, but uh, you know, I have a bunch of things to catch up with with uh, weekend. But again, um, you're not going to be able to find a perfect time that works for everybody. Evenings are good too, but it depends on your energy. I don't know what kind of energy you're going to have. I'm tired in the evening. We're doing content with Carlos. If we push on it after one o'clock, I tell Carlos, no, no, we do it ne next day. I'm not gonna be able to pull it off. You know, I'm already tired. And uh, I'm intro introvert, just so you know. I'm the introvert who's doing a bunch of content because uh, I know that this is what's making money, but naturally I'm introvert who wants to be behind the uh, computer looking at the spreadsheet and running some numbers and comparing percentages year over year. But I have to do the content because I want to make money, you know? That's like, you don't have to be, uh, an extrovert because oh he's doing it or she's doing it because it's natural it's not it's it's not coming out natural it's horrible and it's Carlos am I still horrible at content no. <laughs> 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 yeah that's good that's good see a sales guy knows knows how to act on his feet that's one thing you'll have to pick up too know know how to act on your feet but that takes time, I'm still not good at it. Okay, learn follow up. That's something also you will have to do from zero to 20, know how to follow up with people. That's where all the money's at in the follow up. You talk to one person one time, you should create a system of how to stay in touch, whatever that's gonna be. In the beginning, it could be napkin, but then from zero to 100, you'll have to get rid of that napkin. But it's, it, could be, it could be some kind of a notebook or something, but the follow up, the follow -up is where the money's at. I'm listing homes lately that I've been follow up for nine months. I have one Glenview property that it's, uh, for now it's two years already. Every single month I'm following up. There's always some situation, but it's a good property. I wanna, I wanna still sell it, but it's in my system. It's in the calendar. She, she pops up every time I put the task on her. So you have to learn this follow up game. And sometimes follow up means, I don't know the answer. I'll reach out to you and then do that as soon as you can. So that also is a follow up. That, you know, that, that's huge, you know, sometimes you get you get some service providers that really don't pay attention much to that. But recently I bought a subscription for our office uh, from the company that uh, the guy was just 
amazing on the follow-up. He was amazing leading me through the process and he was so amazing on a follow-up. Uh, he was like, even 9 p.m. he was texting me. And that's the product that's uh, well known in the industry. Like it's a top number one software. He didn't have to do it. I would have still bought it, but he was pulling that. So um, you will learn how to set expectation at the buyer consultation, listing consultations, because you will start losing deals and deals fall apart and your sellers and buyers are unreasonable. It's because you didn't set the right expectations. You'll have to learn how to do it. When your seller is calling you because two days later you're not providing feedback because, because you didn't tell him how your schedule looks like. The buyer is mad because you're not sending every day listings because you didn't tell them that you will be sending it every other day or every time, every once every week. Um, your buyer or seller is expecting something and you're not addressing that, you will have to learn how to set expectations because that's when the conflict happens. So you can, you can ask what you expect from me, how, do, would you, how would you expect, I don't want to be too pushy, I don't want to be too lazy, I want you to see how you would like it, how fast you want to buy and things like that. Um, that doesn't mean you're pushing or anything, you're asking how they want to be treated and that's, that's setting expectations, that's the foundation. You also have to learn how to do that. Um, and sometimes you don't have to be like, I'm running 100 questions, so you're buying, I'm like, man, stop these questions, I'm tired. You don't have to like, how many windows do you want in, the, in your bedroom, you know? <laughs> that's funny, but then I've, I've heard <laughs> something like that too. So you don't go too, too crazy, but you want to know, because recently I got a call from one seller, he says, I am, I'm listed, but two days later, two days just, just passed by, and he says, my agent is not providing me feedback. So he's a little bit unreasonable, but she also probably didn't set up expectations. And he wants me to come at his house, look at it, and maybe list it. I can't do it because he has an agreement with, with an agent, so I kind of politely talk him to go back to his agent, but um, that, there you go. That's what, you have an agreement, you put it for sale, you're doing everything right, and then the seller starts, starts jumping around because the expectations aren't met. He is unreasonable, but he, he has a reason for being unreasonable. Okay, over deliver, outwork, drive more, talk more, research more, call more. This is the period where you're gonna be doing it, and that's okay. If you sit on this zero to 20 for many years, you're gonna be tired of this career. So you have to start implementing things to go, to go further from 20 to 50, because then you will have more brand. People will come to you and stick with you, and they will listen to what you have to say because you've been referred so many times. In this stage, you will have to outdrive, outwork, do more, compete, the seller ask you how many deals you sold, I sold two so far, and that's why you want me, because I have more time for you, you know? You don't say I've been in the business for 10 years, sold many, when you haven't. You actually have this potential advantage over somebody who is selling more. Right now, I'm not a good agent for buyers. That's true for to here, and I'm saying that to everybody. I'm not, because I'm so busy, I don't have much time for buyers, and I pass them to uh, our agents. Um, but I tell them that up front. I'm not, uh, I'm not gonna be able to serve you good. I don't have much time. If you're okay with that, let me know. Most of the times I'll say, I will have another agent who will help you. If you need anything, I'm on the phone. I'll call you back. Um, but right now I acknowledge this, that I'm not a good agent. So newer agents can outbid me, uh, outcompete me, and be better service than me now 100% of the time. And that's what you will have to do too if you're in the beginning stages that, um, you know, that's your advantage. I have more, I have more time. And sometimes uh, when you have a seller who says, well, actually I'm gonna go with a realtor who, so, who has a couple listings in my area. Actually, that's a good thing to have no realtor who has listings in your area. You will, it's better to have a realtor who doesn't have these listings in the area because if I have only your listing in the area, I'm focused 100% of this on this area. Somebody else will just start bringing them to other houses. So you're competing. You're actually bringing somebody who's gonna br uh, take your those clients and, and show other homes. They have expertise, experience, and a little bit more knowledge. You have time, you care, and you want uh, to help. Like sometimes I hear these stories where, uh, where agents say, oh my God, buyers are liars. I never had to say that. Um, it all comes from, you can enjoy this, this business, you can enjoy and you don't have to work with everybody. Um, attraction, attracting business, and even if you're making calls, you can sometimes see like, I don't want to, I, I don't think it's going to be a good fit here. Um, I will rather probably maybe not work with this person. When you're attracting, how, uh, how you structure your business is the way they will do it. Um, because your brand is so, like they will do what you have to say because they believe they've been referred to you so much, so many times, they've listened to your content too, um, and the business is just beautiful things. Right now we have this buyer rep agreement that we have to kind of talk to our clients about, 
The script is super easy. I'll jump into it real quick and before I forgot it. Um, you will have to tell your buyers. And then again, for our LF agents, this is, oh my God, this buy rep agreement, uncomfortable conversation. They go, I'm going to scare them away. They're going to buy a house with somebody who's not going to tell them that. But everybody's going to start saying these things. Everybody's going to educate their buyers about it if they're professional. If not, they're going to be running around and sometimes uh, selling houses, not getting paid, and then going back to a buyer asking for money. That's unethical. So the conversation is super easy. It's like there's a huge lawsuit that just happened recently in the industry. Uh, right now, they allow sellers to pay zero. They used to allow them to pay as little as one dollar, but so far they've been usually paying around two to three percent, roughly. That's what we've been seeing. But there's less, there's more. Sometimes you cannot talk about commission uh, after the showing unethical before the showing if for example the seller is offering zero I'll let you know before the showing if you like the property if you still want to see it if you like the property we're gonna submit an offer and still ask them for the for the compensation if they're not gonna do it will have to be by you but 99.99 percent I'm still gonna be covered by that by the seller side you tr you acknowledge the conversation you let them you have that sink in easy conversation I like to say I like to always finish it up with uh, with a good, like for example, I'm asking for price reduction from the seller. I say the market is telling us that the price is boom, 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 boom. I suggest that we need to drop, but you the boss, you tell me what to do, I'll do what you wanna do. So I'll kinda ask, answer everything, I'll package everything, I give them all the information, but in a wrap that says you the boss and you tell me, I'm your, I'm, I'll do what you will tell me to do. And so then they uh, they like that approach, or you will have to raise too. Your buyers are too low. You're competing. You'll have to tell them, look, I'm not here to tell you what you need to su to submit. My personal opinion is it will have to be twenty five thousand uh, more. Was as is. Was appraisal addendum. Was escalation clause and a bunch of other things. And they will take that information, and they will most of the times will either do what you just said or something close to it. You're breaking in. So in this stage, you're breaking into the industry. You're going to invest more time. Maybe not money, but definitely a lot, a lot of time, weekends, and reading and working with clients and everything like that. That in that stage, your main focus is to bring sales, no matter what type of source it is. Just bring the money coming. Just whatever you can do. Whatever. Just, just. Just search for, for that super low hanging fruit, whatever you can do, close it. Could be a rental, could be a, whatever you can do. Do, do the, start making money so you can see that this, this industry is working because a lot of times you're gonna see like, I don't know how this is done, this is unreal. The, the most important thing in this, in this stage you also will learn that not every single client wants the price. It's not the main objective a lot of times. Most of the time it's not the main objective, the price. Most of the time the main objective is to move, is to either buy or to sell. And then it's about the price. And you are being like, hey, show, let, let me show you what I can do for you. Boom, over, either over price or, show, uh, or send too low offer. Um, the offer is not too low and it's not coming in. They, they said, I'll, I'll be okay with between two, 200, 210. You say, let's do 200 and see, I think it, it's gonna happen. And then the buyer is like, I could have gone to 10, you lost the property for me, you're, you're you know, next agent, you know? you're not as good. The, you're trying to do a good thing, you're trying to get them for a lower price, but that's not the objective. Objective is to get the property and then the price. So I've never had a client who said, I bought the house with you and I wish I didn't pay that much. Never. Never the client said that I'm unhappy with the price. They forget about the price, but they uh, enjoy the house every day. You know. Same thing with the uh, sellers. It's not always the price that's the most important. It's to move. And so sometimes in a conversations where you're talking about the price reduction, you sometimes will have to be, I'm sorry, it has to be 50,000 less. That's my personal opinion, up to you. You decide, you the boss. It's your house, you can pull it off the market. Would you show a house without pre-approval? I would. <laughs> Claudia's like, no, <laughs> I would, I would. I would do a showing, uh, I would do a showing and I would strongly talk about it. I would, sometimes I had clients who would call me and say, ah, I'll be okay, I'll be okay, don't worry about that, I'll be okay, then it's not okay. That means that there's something wrong. That means they don't wanna address that, they, that means that they just wanna see it, that maybe they wanna just use you to see it, and, uh, but if they're like working on it, or they, uh, they, they sp I told them, and then they listen to it, and they say, okay, what's the number, I'll reach out, boom, 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 and then I see they like this house, this house kinda like, we can still go before they get it. Like I, I'll be okay to go there until they got it. And but if it's the second time and they still, they're a little red flag. You know that already shows. But in the initial, I'll still go. 
Um, <coughs> most of the ones that are buying leads or using uh, other referral companies, you're really not addressing probably that conversation yet until you probably meet them and then you talk about it. Um, but, uh, and that's fine. In my book, in my opinion, that's okay because I've done it and it worked. Um, I've had many times where I showed there was no pre approval and then later they went for it and we had a successful closing and everything went smooth. If I'm breaking in, I'm making, you know, less than 100,000 a year and then I'm kind of, I want more. I would, you are building up the database, you're, you're hustling at this point, you're, you're building up the database. I would, I would, I would risk my time and, and, and meeting for maybe it'll work out, maybe it won't. And if it won't, and maybe they're gonna come back to me in two years. Well, when they're ready. Because I've had that so many times. And then a year, the more years you're in the business, the more work you do, the more you put out, the more you attract the universe, you tell them, that you, you start doing lots of things, <coughs> the more you'll be surprised how leads are coming your way. Uh, this is a little formula that I kind of also developed myself. Whatever, how many active clients you have right now multiplied by five is how many deals you'll do annually. If you do have one client, roughly, it's going to be not more than five deals you're going to close. If you're working with four or five deals. So using this formula, you also have to have four clients active all the time. At any given time, you have to have four clients to close 20 deals. <coughs> Think about now 100. You have to have 20 clients active. How Can you do that with all the buyers? You can't. That sales thing will start kicking in when you start growing. And while you start growing, if you start addressing the sales skills on the way up there, first of all, it's going to be hard for you because you already feel like you're successful. You already uh, uh, know a lot. And now you need to learn this new thing. Screw that. I'll just do what I know. And that's when you're stuck at 50. So that's important to learn the sales as soon as you can. Uh, content and SOI lead system, I name it like that because um, what I've noticed is I do a lot, a lot, a lot of content and nothing's happening. And then boom, I go to events, birthday, boom, 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 I pick up like 10 leads. Because they're like, as soon as they see you, they talk about what they've, kind of like, we need to talk about something, uh, I see a video, boom, let's talk. And then as they are there, they're like, you know what, you know, I'll buy. Or my friends buy, boom, 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 and you start these conversations. That's, that's kind of like what I've seen. You do a bunch of content and then you have to go to birthdays, home war housewarming parties, all these things are all your investments. Um, bring a little better gift um, and treat it as uh, investment. It's like um, I'm, I'm putting it into my business because you're gonna pick up somebody, you know? And then it also goes back to commitment because if you're committed, you're like, you're crazy about real estate, you're coming in and you only the only thing you're talking about or, or you're talking about something else and then you're addressing real estate and boom, you're like, oh, you're a realtor, you know? So in this stage, 20 to 50, you know, I call it the teenager <laughs> stage. You're, uh, you're, you're good, you're making, you're already, you're already rolling, you're already making money. It's a good money. Um, you already know what you're doing and a lot of times you become, this could be actually a curse too. You could be a little complacent. You're, you're feeling like things are working, but when the shifts happen, this is the hard, this, this is the stage where uh, you don't have everything in place yet to hit 100. Um, but you're already building up your back-end follow-up. You will have to have some sort of a CRM and a website to capture and work for you. Uh, you already probably have, it took you probably a couple of years to get to this stage. Uh, until you had 50, probably took you three, four years. You probably already have 100, uh, 100 uh, people that, in, that bought, uh, bought and sold with you already in database. You cannot let them go and uh, you know, have them buy and sell with somebody else. They will, you will have that happen all the time. Uh, but you want to have a focus on it because you already have something to lose. You already have that little little shed that you call house, but that's already that you can't you can you can't let it go. So you have to have, for example, we use Chime as a CRM and a website provider. Uh, you can use whatever you want. There's a bunch of companies uh, that, that they do that, uh, but our agents do that. So they give you a website. It's IDX website that links to your CRM and you create a follow-up, automatic follow-up on those, on those clients with updates what's happening in their area. If they bought a property, one, two, three Main Street, you circle around it for prices that are higher than what they paid for. They bought it for 300, you do 305 to 370. How did, so they get emails from what's selling for more than their house, they feel good. Every time the email comes from Oleg, they feel good. So that's training them to feel good about me. So that's where you do the follow-up and the market reports and a bunch of other things so they're coming automatically without you touching them. Plus you also have to have like an events um, that you're gonna be doing once a year, some mailers that you're gonna be doing, 
you can do an ice cream gift card, Starbucks gift cards, things like that. Just just to touch on your database. 100 people in the database, it's easy. It's going to cost you a couple hundred bucks to maybe up to a thousand uh, to send little gift cards and you know just to stay in touch. And there's automatic uh, things that are happening to your database with the updates and follow-up market reports. And when the Cook County tax bill is coming out, you do a smart plan, sends it to everybody. So that's that's your database. That's a focus number one now. As soon as you get to this stage, you're shifting your focus now. It's going to the database because I want those referrals coming. That's my that's my baby. I have to watch it. Um, and then you keep doing the rest still. You're still making calls in this stage and you're still making a bunch of content in this stage. Then it's going to switch a little bit. Then it's going to be lots of uh, um, automations. But at this stage, you're going you're gonna, to uh, create a follow-up backend. Plus the, the website, uh, you don't use just a website that uh, you develop yourself. That doesn't have no value. People coming in, they use it, they, they see it, they come out. You have to have a capture system so that somebody lands on our site, they try to see the property that you advertise on your social, they try to see it, boom, capture. In order to see it more, you have to log in. And then they click on Google link, boom, the Google fills in all the information, boom, they're still able to scroll, but the CRM got their information and the AI starts texting them already too. Mm -hmm. Hey, thanks for visiting. And then boom, you get an email or a text message, boom, lead came in. Sometimes it automatically fills in what the updates should be coming in, you can program, or you'll have to manually do it, but that's already uh, you know, working on it. Uh, referral websites, Ideal Agent, Homelight, Opnest, Agent Pronto, Redfin, Opsady, those for buyers. Uh, sign up, free. You get leads, you get extra, you get extra leads, you get extra sales. Those are free. They charge at the back end when you sell, when you close. They charge roughly, it's about 30, 35% on average. Uh, just, uh, just use them. And because at this point, at this stage, you're gonna be ha you're gonna have to start doing listings. Uh, some, it, depending on how long it takes you to get to the stage, listings sometimes will happen uh, also like uh, naturally. Your buyers will become listing, but you also want to boost it a little bit. You want to you want to go out and hunt. So what we use right now a lot is mailers. After every single time you sell something, even if you represented the buyer, I picked up five listings in Hanover Park just because I bought a townhouse for myself as an investment. I rented out. And then I'm like, you know what, I'll mail. I think that's a, tur a good turnover complex. So I'll mail them, I said I bought, I, 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 I sold it representing the buyer. Uh, boom, boom, boom. Uh, uh, so the text is this, uh, re uh, my name is Oleg, I'm a real estate agent. I was able to sell the property 123 Main Street representing the buyer. Uh, there's still many buyers looking for properties uh, like yours. If you're looking to sell yours, please let me know. I'll be happy to sell it for you. Pretty much that's the script. I sold it. There's many still looking, reach out, okay? Uh, it works, it's amazing script, it's amazing. In the ladder, I, we use a ladder so they spend more time opening, like, on the, uh, that's like I don't do the postcards because as soon as they see it, they know it's a real, sometimes they just throw away. This comes like, who is this, what is this, okay, let me read. And then you, you actually, they invested a little bit of time. Um, so that script works great. Uh, scripts for buyers too. If you have a buyer, uh, you have to do this. Um, as soon as you know the buyer is a little bit specific, mail and say, my name is Oleg, I'm working with a client, it's a, it's a family of two with a dog and a cat. Uh, they're looking for a townhouse or house, three bedroom, basement, long driveway, as specific as possible. There's nothing currently on the market if you're interested in selling, please reach out to me. I'll be able to sell it without putting it on the market. Important language. And then boom, boom, boom. So if it doesn't fit your buyer needs, you will have at least one more relationship of somebody who wants to sell. Maybe you're gonna get a listing. You know? So those those two are are really good. Really good. And then also, of course, if you go to Mojo, if you brought the buyer, if you also competed multiple offers, go to the complex. We're doing it right now heavily. Go to the complex or to a house subdivision that you brought the buyer to, select and make calls. Hey, we, are, we were able to bring the buyer or you submit an offer and you lost it. That's another good one. Say, hey, 
We submitted an offer, we didn't get it. We're looking for more seller for more sellers. My buyer is eager to buy. They need in this subdivision. We like those houses. Do you want to sell? I have a buyer. Why not? You know? You'll be able to sell to say my fee is X plus X, you know? Because they don't they don't, they will only have to pay you at this point because you're already bringing the buyer. It's like magic. I'm bringing the buyer. I'm calling with the buyer. That's good. Because I bought a building recently. Uh, this, uh, the, the guy calls me, hey, you bought a building, you want another one? And how he did it, he went to the records, and then my name was under LLC. You go to CyberDrive Illinois, you pull the name of LLC, it gives you who owns the LLC. You plug in my, my name into anywhere, you're going to find my number. So he calls me and he says, I'm, I'm cooking with another one, you want it? I'm like, hmm, maybe, but, you know, maybe not. But anyways, he, that's, he, he went into hunting mode, you know. I got a listing cooking. I don't have a listing agreement yet, but I'm already looking for buyers. That's also great. But he doesn't have to do it, but he wants probably to double-side it, you know. But he, do, he doesn't have to do it because he already controls the, the listing. So he's going to... Or maybe some, some don't have... You maybe don't have a listing. Maybe you have somebody who will be selling and you know about that. And if that's about like commercial, multifamily... Or condo com condo that's are in a rentable complex, you can reach out to the neighbors and ask them if they want another one. So that's how I was able to find to do my second sale. Uh, that was a for sale by owner who had something. Uh, it was it was a Park Ridge lot with a house that's a teardown. <coughs> then I called him. He says a teardown. Boom, boom, boom. It's a good for developer. Okay, let me find the developer. I messaged a couple people that I know. They know developers. Boom, text. We're interested. You give the address, the guy drives by, doesn't even check the Zillow that's for sale, just call yourself, you know? Then it wouldn't, wouldn't even check. I was worried that he's going to check the Zillow itself, and it's f actually, you just call the guy, do the deal without me. I don't have no sign, anything signed. <laughs> drives by, looks at it, says, okay, works. Boom, I made a deal. I only made 1000 Because the reason why was the, the other broker who brought uh, the developer to, because I reached out to the broker, and she had the developer. Um, she wanted 50-50. That was a commission of 200,000, commission 2%, 4,000, 2,000 to me with the split with the company 50-50, I made 1,000. Like right now, we have pies, uh, apple pies. You know, lots of brokers doing apple pies giveaways. Come to the office, pick up your pie. Mail to the database, call your database, text your database right now, one-to-one. -one. Great. Why not? Right now, one-to-one -one is super important. You talk to your database, you email them, you email them again, you email them again. Who got my email like five times or six times? I even was thinking this morning to email again. You know, like you have to do it. You have to email, mail, email, email, and then you have to actually sometimes pick up a phone and text and things like that. And then more people will come. You get a bunch of pies, come pick it, picture, tag, reshare, you know, social. Uh, and then mailers, like yesterday, last year we did ornaments for Christmas trees. We did, it was actually, a little bit too much work, but for every single person, their last name in a wood kind of like beautiful ornament mm. for the Christmas tree with their last name shipped to them. They take a picture, they tag us, huge. Um, so much promotions, you know. This year we're doing Santa, uh, pictures with Santa. So we are hiring Santa, there's gonna be some other characters, we're gonna have a bunch of toy pictures, blah, 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 candies. We're gonna invite <coughs> the whole database to come take a picture of Santa. They're gonna also take a picture, tag us, Boom, 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 they're going to promote us on their channels, which is, again, goes back to exponential growth. they promoting you on their channel, their friends seeing you. This thing, investors, if you want to get to 100 deals, you will have to learn that too. You will have to learn how to work with investors, specifically the ones that buy and hold. The flips are a little bit tough right now. Maybe the flips are coming, but it's going to be a, a harder way to, to run the business. The ones that want to buy and hold, every single time I want another sale, like, I want another three grand or four grand this week. Boom, I sell, a, uh, I sell an investment property in, in one day or two days and I, and I get that, that check. If you know how, what investor is looking for, the cash flow, how to run the numbers, complexes that are rentable, um, and uh, you know how to sell this, this property. Sometimes you even send a magnet on your social. Two bedroom, two bedroom condo investment, $400 uh, dollars a month cash flow. DM me if you're interested. Mm. You'll get some, somebody who's gonna text you something, then you can talk to them. You can always find, there's always there, they always there. Some investments, even with uh, today's rates, it's still better to own 
um, than to rent. There will still be cash flow. Sometimes not as much. And investors right now would be saying, right now it's hard, but wait until they come down, you refinance, you create cash flow. I have properties, uh, some of them were so little, but right now with that spike, I got uh, you know, right, free cash flow just uh, just created on its own. But investors game is like, you need to learn what the cap rate is, what the, like for multifamily buildings, high commission checks, there's a lot of them in Chicago. You don't have to go for high commission checks for luxury properties like in Texas, Florida, Arizona, they go after million dollar houses. There are a lot of them over there. Here, our, our, our good properties are multifamily. There's a lot of them, but not on the market. You know, there's there's a lot of them in the, it are built, it's overbuilt. There's a lot of them, but you will have to. Uh, it w it's a good strategy to go out and, and make calls to those owners, and they're ready to talk to you. Would you like? Uh, are you interested in selling? No. Are you interested in buying more? Uh, I don't know. Maybe. What's your criteria? How much is your building uh, bringing net? Uh, sometimes they'll ask, how much is my building worth? You have to know how to value the building. You know, you have to know that the NOI is the most important. It's a cash, it's the, it's a net income that's, that the building is bringing. And sometimes rule of thumb, what the gross is multiplied by 10, you know, it's in good areas. You can say that that's probably roughly in the range. Um, just have to kind of uh, also dive into that industry too a little bit, just to learn what the multifamily is doing, two to fours, why two to four units are priced per unit more than the six flats. That's the question that the investor's gonna ask. Like, why would I choose um, two to four when I can buy a six unit? Or I would say two to four is actually better because there's less tenants. So why the two to four is usually priced higher per unit? is because there's more buyers I can afford. You don't have to put 25% down with a balloon mortgage. You can do sometimes 10, sometimes maybe now from November 18th, you can do 5% because new guidelines are coming out. So maybe if you can squeeze in 5%, this opens up to so many pool of buyers. Uh, so these kind of like conversations, the cash on cash returns, how to calculate the net income a year, divide by what, how much money you're gonna put in, that's gonna create you knowing more about investment. And, um, and, and the good source is biggerpockets.com, you know, those podcasts and website, there's so many tools in there, biggerpockets.com, you know, it's simple. Um, that's that's when you have everything in there. I'm, I'm there also like just watching a bunch of interviews. The more you know, like subject to what different strategies for, for doing deals. A lot of times clients will ask you, talk to me about the second mortgage. How can I do a second mortgage on my house? So maybe it's a HELOC, maybe it's a cash out refi. You know, you want to see like HELOCs on investments, you have to go to commercial bank a lot of times. A lot of times commercial bank doesn't want to take a second position. They want to take the whole position. They would like to refinance the whole thing. And now you're losing the 3% over eight now. Or you'll have to go find a bank who will take a second position because the first position is the one who's holding the mortgage right now. So these things are, you have to kind of understand what's going on in this, in this field because it's completely different. DSCR loan, how's the DSCR loan calculated? That's also like you still building up the, the foundation for 100 deals. Those people who are doing the deals with you, they value you more than the other agent. It's not just because you kind of somehow found 100 people. It's just because you are much better and you're attracting. The reason why we are not a thousand agent company is because I'm not good enough yet. It's because I don't know the people's skills yet good. I don't know how to, uh, how to value if the agent is good or not good yet. I don't know leadership skills yet. I'm working on it, but it's still I'm still struggling with it. I don't know recruitment game yet. I don't know the operations of the brokerage yet. Uh, I'm not good yet, you know. So that's why I'm not at the size that I want to be at. But I'm working on it. So if you want to get to 100, you have to work on it too. This stage is you will have to have people that will help you, some virtual assistants maybe with some admin stuff, or maybe you will have to hire somebody maybe part time. Maybe you partner up with somebody or you use somebody who provides you in the office maybe, because that was my mistake when I was in previous office before I went on my own. I couldn't really find maybe somebody who, was, who would be good fit for me, but I wasn't really looking, I couldn't, I didn't see it. And I was not told to be using that. But at this point, you will have to have a lot of help with admin and you will be using, uh, 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 what's it called? Uh, listings will be the most important thing that you will be focusing on at this, at this stage. You are going to be the brand. You will have to master the content. You will have to do it. There's no questions about it. If you're going to get to this stage, 
do, do, don't even think about this is not going to work. You will sometimes you will have to see, uh, for example, for sale by owner sign. Um, unless you don't want to sell as much, but you will have to have boom, boom. Hey, hey, I'm in the area. It's my area. I want to know what what's for sale. Anytime you can stop by, take a look. My opinion is that with for sale by owners, um, there's two ways to do it. The best way is to book the face to face with a preview. The the other way is to book the the. Mm, if I can net you the mo more money or the same amount of money you're looking for. With me representing you, would you be open to it? That's you going for the listing appointment right away. That's less chances that it's going to happen, but you can still find somebody who's ready to do it. Uh, but the, probably the best way is to do the preview. Uh, that's how I've been doing it. Um, and that's how I've been. Um, we, uh, so those who are calling uh, in our office for, for sale by owners, they, they're doing it that way with the preview. So basically, the brand, you are the brand. You are the one who, who's putting out a lot of content and taking the content seriously like it's it's the it's the but still in the mornings you're making calls you're still making calls to your clients past clients and following up on the deals that's that's your that's your job that's you waking up like what do i have in line like today okay so who can i sell maybe okay i got a listing who can i sell it to you know who's my who's people that i can sell to maybe somebody else sometimes tell me you always have one more buyer in your pipeline that's something i just put in our chat in our office uh, we have a group chat that you always have that one more client. You just you just kind of sleeping on it right now. There's one there's one that more that if you start calling or start thinking who could be or going back to your past clients and a little bit talking to them a little bit more. There's always going to be somebody who's going to give you some indications. I want to do a deal, and then you going out and making those conversations will create that situation where they're going to say that. You can just talk about you can just talk about how's life going, how's everything going, and they're gonna ask you how's business going. And you can start talking what the opportunities right now are, you know, like right now what we're seeing, we're seeing at the high rates. But there's less sellers, there's less buyers, but there's still more buyers, you know. Like I did with uh, multifamily in Wheeling, maybe you saw it. So they bought it last year, and now the prices went up. And I saw them. Look, the prices are at this point. If you want to sell, just this is what how much you can net. Turns out they emailed me back. They said, "Yeah, we're interested in selling. I put it up for sale. I got the full price cash." Last year I sold it to them. Next year I uh, I sold it for them. I made thirty-five thousand, you know, on uh, this side and that side. Who bought with me something one time as an investment, and they are not really continuing buying. So they don't believe in buying right now. If they don't believe in buying right now, they're selling right now. They're holding on to it for some cash flow, maybe, maybe not. So I'm gonna I'm gonna talk to them. See how's everything going? How's the guy? How's the renting? How's the, how's they uh, they paying? How's everything? Did you renew? What's you renting for? There's gonna be a conversation. Like, oh, I'm actually introducing your thoughts about maybe selling. Oh, why? What's causing you to think that way? That's my first line right away. What's causing? What's why? What, what are you gonna do with the money? Like if you sell, you're gonna pay capital gain. Especially if you own it like for a year or two, you're gonna pay capital gain. What are you gonna do? I'm gonna put it back in the business, or one guy tells me I want to start building. Uh, he wants to try become a builder, but you know, with that one I went straight because they're investors. They're looking for just the money transactions. And with some, um, you can even come in, but with two months, I don't know. Yeah, it's too fast. Two months, two months, you can just check in how's everything going, things like that. Maybe you want to buy more. Leverage listings, people, money. That's your leverage. Uh, people, you'll have to have some help. Money, you'll be spending some on some things that, like, I'm in the radio, I'm in the newspaper, I'm running Facebook ads nonstop. Those are always uh, monthly bills. Uh, we're running uh, ads on Google for leads too, but that's leverage. Like, like you're gonna have now money. At this stage, you're gonna have the money to go back to work for you 24/7, so you can use that money now. You're not gonna be buying probably leads to make calls to strangers because you now at this point have a brand where leads coming to you. You're not going to be buying those leads, and you're going to be laughing at those who are buying leads. You know, you can still be subscribed to UpCity, to Redfit Partner, because those are free. And maybe as, as you build up your pla uh, your your kind of profile on those pages, they're going to send you a little better leads, and you can maybe even refer them to somebody because you don't want to do business at this point. Maybe with strangers, you want to do it only with those who are referrals. This is becoming very enjoyable, but you're not going to have free time. At this, unless you got you have some help with showings, but you're not going to be able to spend money and hire people 
unless you are already rolling at, at least 50 deals, at least making 300 or something. You're not gonna have a lot of expenses uh, if you're being smart, if you're not spending um, crazy amount of money on lead gen and Zillow leads, really, you're not gonna be spending um, too much money. The whole, almost the whole thing is gonna be close to net because you're gonna be putting in a lot of time. But with, a, with hiring people, that's when you're gonna be spending, like showing help, admin, and you can, you, it, that's easy. Like showing help, you can do a case by case basis. If you need a showing help, you can ask somebody uh, who you know that to, to fill in and then, you know, for little fee. An admin, you can partner up with somebody or hire a virtual, partner up with some other agents to use an admin, that's a good way. But everything you were doing in the first year when you were going from zero to 20 is right now paying off. Your people skills, your sales skills, the communication skills, you knowing how to read people, uh, questions to ask when they're in front of the house and husband and wives are like they're talking about different things like he's looking at one thing she's talking about one. you can sometimes tell that they not talk they don't talk at home about it she's interested in buying a house he's at work he's coming to show it because she's dragging him so you need to learn asking questions that are thought-provoking questions like when they're walking around there's two bedrooms on this side one bedroom on that side how's the floor plan that creates that not yes no questions but how do you like this floor plan in the house and then sometimes when the wife and husband starts talking to each other and they start uncovering things you know that's that's what you also need to learn how to ask these questions sometimes uh, they want to uh, submit a, submit an offer it's it's lower offer from zero to ten how bad do you want to to win this house that's going to tell you a lot seven what would it take to make it a ten there's no backyard there's no pool there's no this there's no that. So if there's a house with no this, we don't look at it anymore. And it, the way you ask is not like you're, you're trying to, you're trying to uh, you know, make them say something that they don't want to say. It's just being, being very thoughtful and trying to help them make a decision. Because a lot of times, if you're in the business, and I'm sure if you're selling houses for many years, you, you know that uh, the value in us is to ask questions so it leads them to making that decision. And that's what you're, you're not ready yet if you're in the first stage, or maybe you are, maybe you're good already. But that will have to be there already in place too. Like the first week or first couple weeks in the business, I went on a radio. Uh, I went after the guy who has a radio, Ukrainian community radio. Um, I don't know how many listeners, but somebody told me that if you go on the radio, there are people that listen to it. I'm like, okay, I'll go. I don't know what to say. I never spoken. I'm, I'm shaking. You know, I'll go. He doesn't reply to me. I, I reach out to him again. He doesn't reply to me. I reach out to him again. Finally, books a meeting. He looks at me and says, "You know, how long have you been in business?" I kind of know the realtors in the in the in the industry. Like, and I say, "Yeah, I'm, I've been a little bit." And then he he's like, "Okay, this is a plan. Boom, boom, boom. You can do six months. You can do three months." And uh, I finally took it. And then the time comes, we give me a mic, and I'm almost I don't know. I almost passed out with that mic in front of me. It was seven o'clock in the morning. I couldn't sleep the whole night. I'm coming in and I'm still and I'm drinking coffee. That was a mistake. I'm drinking coffee to on the road to the to the radio that was in the downtown. I live in Arlington Heights in a one bedroom. And I come to, to the radio, they give me a mic. But the guy who was interviewing me, he was helping a lot. He was leading the whole the whole thing. And so I'm, I was just like saying, yeah, uh, wait until we talk about selling. <laughs> I'm like, I'm watching it back. I'm like, oh my God, horrible. My, way, <laughs> my wife says that was horrible. Uh, <laughs> next time she... <laughs> Dude, like, it was kind of like five, six, seven times when I was still bad, but then it like, become better. And then until today, I'm still on the radio. Like Thursday, we did a radio with... Me and two more agents in our office, we have a little show now. We do it twice a week now. Well, it's still starting out is intimidating. I still, but still it's hard. But then as we're rolling, okay, now yeah, it's easy. You know, we can, we can talk. But starting, it's still hard for me. Um, but uh, yeah, like uh, I went on the radio. Why? I was not good. I was scared. I didn't know what to say, but I was told that it's going to help me. So I'm going to do it because I think if I do it, then it's going to bring me money. Plus, I burn all the bridges. I have nothing back to, I, I don't have anything to do. And well, how I did it is like, I went to my manager broker and I asked him some questions, some out of, out of the blue questions. He would say some smart things. I would write them down and I would come to the radio and say these things. Like it's, <laughs> like it's mine, <laughs> you know? 
Um, and so the last thing is by be, is be patient because sometimes it takes you four years like it did me, but whole COVID boosted. Uh, and right now I understand that there's less activity. We are in a shift. We are turning, the, the graph is turning down. But now we have to adapt. Like I said yesterday in our training, 2006 and seven, market shifted, bunch of realtors left. Remember that? But a bunch of realtors also decided to go after foreclosure and for sale and make killing in it. So they adapted, those left. And then they came back when the industry became a little better. So it's all about adapting. And that's the, one of the biggest skills too, which is not a list, but thanks God I, I remember that. Right now you have to adapt. And if you've been in the business and it's been through 2016 all the way to 2022, it's been an easy ride so far. Now it's going to be a bunch of real estate agents going to leave who knows what's going to happen to NAR so far we don't know but I think everything's going to be okay a bunch of might be higher fees maybe less coming maybe some leaving leaving us more room and we're going to do deals right now year or two or three we're going to do only those who need to sell there's always death happening there's always divorces there's always uh, marriages happening there's always babies uh, being born and uh, places too small those will have to leave absentee owners are the ones who own properties and maybe they want to get rid of them you will have to develop the calls and I have that on the next slides we talked about uh, investors and the reason why is because they're uh, repeat repeat buyers when they need to sell and buy for themselves usually those are people who have some businesses and money they will do a higher transaction and you can leverage them up to a multifamily too most of the times they grow up to that if they start with condos and if not they will still stay in condos which is fine you'll just do, do be doing a bunch of deals and you can call complexes that are they doing deals in so you can get uh, some extra other sales times you feel that and I'll tell you um, I only fired one client out of uh, I think 700 closings that I did one client I only uh, said that I'm not gonna work with you only one after everybody else bought and sometimes it takes 30 houses to show but in the beginning uh, that's how much it's gonna ta take then and sometimes they need to put an offer to lose a deal in order to get another property and when they lose a deal you're gonna be happy because you don't want to show one property and have a client buy right away because they're gonna think that you're gonna be you are the agent who sells the first property and you are pushing anything they're gonna be seeing so sometimes you want them to see some things and sometimes put a write an offer and lose it because then they know what needs to be done and they're not gonna close and then their friends are gonna tell you oh you overpaid and you they're gonna know they didn't overpay because they lost a couple they already know like don't tell me that because i i know like we had a listing that uh when well, the neighbors said that this could be this should be that much and then we had to come down come down come down come down and then the neighbors now like don't tell me what it should be because i know we tried that you know who knows what to ask we're interviewing other agents. What would they say to take this listing, right? <laughs> what are you looking for in the agent? So, I don't know. You're looking for a communication? Yes, yes, yes. You're looking for, for somebody who can do, who can sell it for a good price? You're looking for somebody who is flexible on their term or somebody who's going to lock you in for a year? Oh, oh, oh that, 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 that one. You know, they sometimes they don't know what to ask and hits the point. One time I lost the listing and I called the guy and that's a good thing to do is like when you call, when you li lose, you call the guy, what's the, what was the reason, tipping point, why do you choose? Well, actually she hit all the, all the buttons and she had a book about how to sell the property. And I know that book because you can buy the book and they will put your face on it. And then it seems like you bought, you wrote the book, but that worked. Uh, another reason the average investor is uh, always on the market, they always buyer. And a lot of times they're always a seller, and um, they uh, they usually are talking about investing, and they're motivating other people to invest too. And they are usually in in between investors too. You will see that happening. So as soon as you get into investment, your s number of sales will go up too. So seller lead sources, we like absentees, we like just souls to call and mail. Uh, multifamily owners and rentable complexes, condos and rentable complexes. There's more, you know, there's FISBOs and, for, and, uh, and, uh, and expireds, and there's also for rent by owners. With for rent by owners, you also, you ask, do you need help? No, I don't. How many properties do you have? I have plenty. Do you need to sell any of them? I do. Let's go. Or I don't need to do anything. When is the soonest lease expire? When are you, what are you going to do with it? I don't know yet. Do you want me to run numbers and to see what, what's better to sell or buy or, or sell or rent? Uh, and that's, uh, you know, 
so many questions, so much conversation you can do with those who are owning and don't live there. Because the biggest problem right now with the low inventory is because they own for the low interest rate, they don't want to trade up. But the investors sometimes, and those who own properties they don't live in, they will sell and don't have to trade up. They will just sell. And sometimes properties are, are with no mortgage. And people always sell those to, that don't have mortgage, you know? So, absentees are good because you can ask them a bunch of questions. Do they own? Do they have? Do they plan to buy anything else? How many do they have? When the lease expires, what they want to do? Do you want help to run numbers and decide whether to sell or rent? Do you actually, do you know how to run the formula? So figure out how much cash flow they would make if the um, annual cash flow. This is how much cash flow if they made if they rented the property and not sold it. Divide by equity if they sold the property, and see what the what the percentage is. You see if it's if it's higher than eight, nine, ten percent. Basically, they're they're making good cash flow on their equity keep it makes sense if it's low the high equity they have hundred thousand but they only make it hundred bucks a month makes sense to sell it and put it somewhere where you can make more money with it or use it with a business or whatever that's how you can kind of help them and bring some logic if they don't know how to do it referral websites we already talked about them Apps, uh, up nest ideal agent home light friend up city those are buyers ideal agents is great but they cut your commission Home light using Google. Upnest is good too. They have uh, buyers and sellers. Uh, just sold mailers. As soon as you sell something, mail, make it a habit. We have our admin reaches out to agent right away. Do you want to mail? We'll mail right now. So just do that, have it automatically done. You'll spend 200 bucks. We use Remind, pull neighbors and go through Remind and they will do everything. You don't have to print anything. You have to stamp anything. Everything is done. Click, 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 click. Uh, credit card, boom, sold. In two weeks it's there and you will roughly get a call. From 200, 300 mailers, you'll get one call. Sometimes it takes six months for them to sit on it and uh, call you back, and sometimes it takes right away, and sometimes you'll send six mailers, nothing happens, and then you get a couple, because we picking up listings from it uh, all the time. I have, mailer, I have a buyer mailer, we talked about it, and oh, Google, Google local service ads. Uh, as soon as you have a Google page, you get some reviews going, ask your clients to put some reviews, and then and then, you know, like if you put in a uh, realtor near me, uh, it gives you pictures. So those are local service ads. If you put a painter near me, it gives you a couple painters. Uh, you will have to go through a longer process of verification. They ask your insurance, they ask your license number, a uh, bunch of other stuff. They verify you, but then you most of the times you get approved and you will have that uh, picture with, uh, with uh, your advertisement. You put in the budget, but they only charge you after you get a call. And you get calls. You get call, It's a, most of the time it's a seller call, or you get a message. Y you can download the app, it's called Local Service Ads. And you get an app and uh, you will, they will message you, they will call you, you'll get it through the app, it's recorded too, you can listen to the conversation. And sometimes it's a painter who's calling for some business, you can dis dispute, and they will approve dispute, they will listen to, to that conversation, get the service from Google, and I have it at a thousand bucks a week, but you don't pay as much. They, they, you might get one call a week, and if it's a painter, you dispute it, but you will get roughly two calls a month from people who want to sell, and uh, sometimes buy. But most of the time it's to sell. Like a seller, seller, a realtor near me, they click, they check you out, they check the reviews, and sometimes they click on either message. Or so that's a good one, that's free again. You don't have to pay anything for that. And then it's about um, um, 2024 market. Um, I kind of touched on it a little bit more. Focus more on sellers. Uh, talk to sellers. They create, because sellers, you get assigned calls, you get buyers from that coming. We all know that. So uh, it's a hunt season. Let's, um, let's, you know, let's focus on that. A little bit, some other lead gen ideas, couple things that you could do. I have a screenshot. I did it uh, recently. Get in the habit of touching people a little bit that they, that they don't expect. Paul just listed just sold neighbors. We spoke about that. Bring lunches to business and companies, my favorite one. If you know, if you have a friend who runs the company or works at the company, you can just uh, have a couple pizzas or whatever. Just bring them, put a business card, maybe sit around two minutes here and there if there's any questions and leave. 
They're going to figure out who brought the lunch. They're going to take pictures of your business card. They don't need your pitch. They don't need you to waste their time. They're going to they're gonna know who brought the lunch, bring a couple business cards, and get out. They, you're going to get some calls. You're going to get some leads. As I was doing restaurant reviews, that was actually a good one that I did. I did a restaurant reviews. I went to a restaurant, and I sat down with the owner, did an interview. I put the camera on myself. Uh, I had uh, uh, microphones, I click record, I sit with the owner, I talk to him, I record a spot a little bit and go back home and edit the whole thing and make it my own. Uh, took me a lot of times to do one, I did 17 of them, I shared them to a bunch of Facebook groups and it worked and I got a bunch of calls. Uh, people recognize me and stuff like that. All I did was like, hey, it's all like Century 21, we're reviewing the restaurant, let's go. And that would take me many tries, it would take me like, this, like that, you know, and all that. It's trying, I'm, it's uncomfortable. And then I sit down with this owner, I'm like, okay, Joe, so, um, shoot, okay. Okay, Joe, so, you know, and it's awkward. It's, it's, it's horrible, but he was okay, you know, and a lot of them were. Like, I was messing up a lot, and we were going, it's, it's not good, I'm not good at it, and, um, but, and they were also boring. You know, they were boring. Like me sitting down with the owner, nobody wants to listen to it. So I would just right now do, if you go to a restaurant, for example, or anywhere, record the whole thing, record the whole thing, and then do a video up front, like, hey, this is Oleg with Comar Real Estate, let's go check this. And then home, you can kind of put everything together and do a voiceover on the Instagram app or whatever app you're doing, um, or just put a music on it. Just put a freaking music on, don't even talk. Nobody maybe <laughs> wants to. But in the beginning, you can say who you are, you know? Just so that kind of is there. And then uh, you make a fun video under one minute with music, and then somebody maybe record you eating that thing, and that's good. That's gonna get views, I promise you. In the beginning, you say who you are, and then you're reviewing places, and then you can review, like you can even focus on one area, and you can do a park, school, restaurant, nail salon, boom, 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 without even asking them permission. You just, I mean, you know, if you're going a little bit too deep, then you probably want to let them know that you're doing it, but I mean, restaurant just showing the place and recording you eating food, I mean. We're going to the kitchen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so if you were to start all over again, and let's say you want to sell a no. Brand new or like a realistic okay, right? I got what you're saying. But in a brand new place, how I would do it? You're in a brand new. This is the only way I would do it. It's just going back to the businesses and making reviews about them. I will break in because nobody's doing it. I'll break in and it's exponential. I'll I'll reach because that's the demographic, that's location. Plus it's a video. Plus nobody's doing it. White space, wide open, coming in, crushing it very soon. Just have to just have to do a lot of them, and I would make them short. I would make them like a minute, you know, minute uh, minute videos, and I'll put them all all the platforms. This uh, the same video everywhere. I'll put it, put it, put it. Maybe even advertise it. Yes. How I do, used to do it is I would reach out to the business and say I would like to do a video with you, it's going to be free, and then they say yes, you know, and then I would sit down with the owner or manager, I would make it, I would tag them, they would reshare and they, it would go far. If, but if you're not uh, feeling comfortable reaching out to them, I mean it's a good thing to do it, you know, to reach out and let them know. You don't have to do the interview and a lot of owners don't want to talk. They. Um, and some will all like to talk a lot and they feel like they're a superstar, everybody wants to know how they started and everything, then that's boring, nobody wants to know that, but they feel like they need to like sit for 50 minutes, but it's boring. So I would just do the review of the place, good food, how it looks. In the beginning you say, Claudia, I'm a realtor, let's go, you know? And then if they're interested, they click on your icon, they'll go and see who you are, what you do, that's, that's great, you'll be surprised. And then do the Facebook Lives about home buying process. You know the home buying process, you know A to Z. Do them. You don't have to do live, maybe do recording, but it's, it's good also content that, um, to do. You know, like you put in a camera, boom, maybe mic, maybe no mic, whatever. It doesn't have to be high quality. My first videos were horrible, just, just very bad. And I would just share them. Like, I'm coming out of the listing. I'm coming out of the listing. And I'm like showing my son, you know what I mean? <laughs> That's the post. Like, what? Where's the value? What is this? This is a selfish video.
you can do voiceover that's good too voiceovers are so good you like you put a bunch of content and then you sit home I used to sit in a closet there's a bunch of clothes so it's like good yeah, yeah. good you know and then I would talk and then you can like you can talk pause mm, next sentence is you talk pause and it actually creates like very good through Instagram you can do it Instagram is good for voiceovers or maybe other okay that's it <laughs>